Hey everybody, welcome back to another one of the Raspberry Pi Foundation's Digital Making at Home videos. Uh, this week our theme is looking after yourself, and so we know that it's a bit stressful at the moment with everybody being locked in the house and not able to go out very often, so the video we're about to do today is going to be a bit of a stress reliever for everybody, so taking care of yourself in the sense that you can let some of your stress out in a nice, friendly, easy way, and we'll make a project that will let you do that by creating some digital bubble wrap. Um, I know that's a really nice thing to do. I really like to like let my stress out on some bubble wrap sometimes. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, you like to pop bubbles in the bubble wrap? Yeah. When we get our packages, we pull the bubble wrap out and we pop all the bubbles. Sometimes you twist it together and they pop all at once. It's a nice feeling to like let a bit of your anxiety and stress out into the bubble wrap rather than the people around you. So we're going to do that project today, and it's based on the balloons project from the Raspberry Pi project site. Now, to get to the starter project for DM bubble wrap, what you want to do is go to this address here, so rpf.io slash DM bubble wrap, all right? And if we go to that uh, URL, it will load up a page, and you'll get this project site. So now you'll see the project is here ready for you to go. Now what you want to do is click the green remix button okay and that will open the project up here you see there's a sprite already in there for you to use that's our bubble and I'll pass over to Xavier now so that he can drive and he can show you around the project a bit so take the mouse mate okay so show everybody where the costumes are in our sprite so they can understand what we're going to do with it so we click on our costumes tab fantastic and you'll see that it's got one costume that's the normal bubble that hasn't been popped yet and then there's another costume underneath it which is the popped bubble so show on bubble two Zay. That's the one. So that's what the bubble will look like once we've popped it. So let's go back to bubble one costume. Yeah, we go to our code. And what do we always start our projects with? We always start it with our events. Yeah, with our events and our green flag. Fantastic. So drag that into the workspace. That's it. And just click the plus two times for me down there so we make the, the blocks a bit bigger for everyone to see. Fantastic. Well done, mate. Excellent. So when our green flag is clicked, the first thing we want it to do is make sure that it's all of our bubbles aren't popped yet. So what do we want to change first? Yeah, we want to make sure our costume is bubble one. Fantastic. We go to our code, and how would we make that happen in our code, you know, in our looks menu? What would we make sure it was doing? So once we click the green flag, we want to make sure it changes to costume bubble one. So grab your looks menu, Zay, and drag in your switch to costume, and make sure it says bubble one inside that little pull down. Fantastic. So now when we click the green flag, no matter what's happened previously, it will switch to costume bubble one. All right, just like that, and it's ready to go. So the next thing we want it to do is take itself, that sprite there, and we want it to clone, right? Which means make lots and lots of copies itself, right? Where else have we heard the word clone recently? Star Wars. Star Wars, very good. And what were the clones in Star Wars? Clone Troopers. Clone Troopers, very good. And they were all the same, weren't they? They were just one copy of one guy, but there were thousands of them. And so we're going to make a bunch of copies of our bubble, just like the Clone yeah. Troopers. Like Boba Fett, that's right, very good. So, what we're going to need to do now is we want a go-to. Now, if you go to Motion, and you'll see in your go-to menu, it's already got the numbers put in there. We want our go-to X and Y. Now, I've already set it up for you guys at home, so I should have minus 210 and 150, which will be the top left-hand corner. So your sprite will automatically go to the very top left-hand corner before it starts to clone itself. And then we want it to clone a bunch of times, right? We want it to clone actually 48 times based on the size of our sprite. So how would we get it to do something 48 times? What's the block we need to make it do something? Repeat. repeat. Very good. So we go into our control blocks and we want to repeat. That's it. Clip it on the bottom. And we want it to repeat 48 times. So if you could change our variable in there, that's it. Change that. I thought it was 47. Nah, it's 48, because 47 means that it wouldn't clone the bottom left corner and that bubble oh, yeah. will remain unpoppable. So if we have 48 and then we hide our initial sprite, we'll have 48 poppable bubbles, right? Awesome. So the thing we want it to do now is create a clone of myself. So if you scroll down a little bit in your events, then right down the bottom of your control blocks. There we go. Can you see where it says create a clone of myself? That's the one. Pop that into our repeat block. And so now 48 times, it's going to make 48 copies. But, unless we tell it to, where are all the copies going to be? They're going to be... Yeah, they're all going to be there. They're all going to be one on top of the other. So we'll just have 48 bubbles all layered on top of each other, which is no good. We want them to be next door to each other, don't we? Right? So, so we're going to have it take here, and we're going to clone and move and clone and move and clone and move. Right? And so we want it to move. Now, our sprite is 125 pixels wide. So we want it to move half the distance of that, right, and then clone again. So what we want it to do is we go to move 62 steps. So go to motion, and we want it to move 62 steps. So drag that in underneath your create clone. 
Fantastic, and change that number to 62. Well done, buddy. Excellent, cool. So now our next step, so if we have it clone ourselves 62 times, click green flag and see what it does. Makes one line. Makes one line only, and you can see there we've got, that's right, Xavier's pulling clones down, pull them down. There's loads of clones all stacked up together in the corner there, and that's not what we want. So we want it to get to the end, and when it recognizes it's at the end, we want it to go down a bit and then do another row, and go down and do another row. So under our 62 steps, man, grab an if block. Grab an if from your controls. If then, that's the one. Clip it in underneath, cool. So we want it to say if it's X position, which one is the X position, man? Is that sideways or up and down X? Which one is it? Yeah, sideways. It gives us a clue underneath our workspace. Show everybody where our clue is for X and Y. That's it. So we want it to say when our X gets all the way to the end, which is about 240, then we want it to go down a row and start all over again. So inside your if block, grab an operator, and we want the greater than operator. Which one's that one? That's the one. Pop it in. And how do we know that's greater than? Um, because... If it's greater than like the crocodile's mouth jump that way. Very so good. So if it jumps that way, that's less than less than greater than. Nice. So if our x position, so go to motion and you'll see a little round blob that says x position in it. It's right down the bottom of our motion ones. It's a nice round one that says x position. Awesome. So if x position is greater than fifty, yet let go. Clink. There it goes. And how do we know it's going to go in the right hole? If you take it out, you can see um, the circles white around. Right, very good, man. It's like and when I uh, put one of those, when I put, if I'm going to put the next one in, you'll see it's going to light up. Cool, so you can pull that one out and show everybody how you did that again. So take it away. There we go. And we can see which hole it's going to go in because the hole sort of lights up, doesn't it? It has that white circle. Awesome. And so now that number, we want that number, not 50. We want it to be 240. So this will be once it gets all the way to the end of our row and it recognizes that its X position is 240, then it should go down a row. So we want it to go to X again. So scroll up a bit. There we go. Go to X, Y. You see underneath go to random position. That's the one. And pop that in our if. Now we want these two numbers. So our X number should be minus 210 again, which is all the way up against the left hand side. So minus 210. That's right, I mean, you can just type over the top once it's blue. So minus 210. Cool. And now we're going to have to do a funny thing in the next hole. So grab another operator. We want the minus operator this time. So it's one of the round ones. That's it. We want the minus. That's it. Clip it into the second hole where it says 150. Cool. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say when you get to the end of the row, Take your X position, go all the way back to the left, and whatever your Y position was, move it down a little bit, right? So it needs to check for the Y position first. So let's go to motion again, where we hold all of our coordinates. Scroll down to the Y position, the round one, and pop that in the first hole of your operator. Perfect, man, really fast, very good. And so now we want it to move down the same amount as it moves across, because it's a square sprite. So we want to have that last number be 62. So 62, cool. So what we've got now, our code says, create a clone of yourself, then move 62 steps, right? So I think do it again. If you find out that your X is 240, move down a row and start a new row. And then? Hide. My man, so we want it to hide when it's done. So go to looks, because hide is under looks, and it's down the bottom, some of our little short ones. That's it, hide. Pop that in right in the very, very end. Yeah. Excellent, that's cool. So now when you click the green flag, we it should get a bunch of bubbles. Do, 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 do. Nice. So now that's, we made all of our clones, but now we need them to be interactive, don't we? We want to take all of our clones, we want it so that when you click on them, they what? They pop. They pop. And how do we make them look like they've been popped? Uh, the position too. Yeah. So not their position. What's it called? It's what you wear on Halloween. Costume. Costume. Fantastic. So we're going to take a control block. So go back to our code. Yep, because we've got our two costumes. So go to control. Now, if you go down a bit, you'll see at the end of it, it says, when I start as clone. So grab that one and drag it across. We're going to make a new list. So pop it up level with your when green flag. That's it. I'm going to put our new code next to this. So now we're going to say, when I start as a clone. So all of these bubbles here, they're clones, just like Boba Fett, right? They're clone copies troopers. of the same, like clone troopers. They're copies of the same thing. So we're saying, when we have a copy, so when our new clone trooper comes out or our new clone bubble comes out, 
right? We want it to work in this fashion. So all of our clones now, all the code we put in here will work on all of our clones. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sweet, man. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our clones show. So go to looks and choose show and clip that to the bottom of your when I start as clone. So go down to show, it's down the bottom there, it's a little short one, that's it. Straight underneath when I start as clone. Brill, very good work, man. And now we want a forever. So we want it to say, so as long as you exist, excuse me, as long as you exist, I want you to do this thing forever. So that's a control block, we want forever. Clip it on the bottom. Nice. What do we want it to do forever? Uh, we want it to pop. We want it to pop, so we want it to say, if I click you, pop. So what was that first word I said? If. Well done, man. Grab an if then block. Okay. Now, to get it to have a pop on it, right, we want it to have the mouse pointer on it, it needs to be touching it, and then we want to click the mouse. So to get it to do both those things, we want to do this and this. Mouse on it and click the mouse. So go to your operators, there's one and that says and in it. If you dra drag it, it'll come out of the space, so all you have to do is just go on it and yep. press it. Very good. Don't drag it. Don't drag it, that's a good tip. It's a good tip, everybody at home. Don't drag your bubbles. You need to tap them, don't you, to pop them. That's cool, because we had some issues, didn't we? Yeah. Dragging them around the other day. But if you just click the green flag, it will reset all your bubbles nice and neat. So that's cool, man. So we want our operators. And remember, nice. we want one that's got the pointy ends. So we can see the hole has pointy ends, so we want a block with pointy ends that says and in it. Where's the one that says and? So it's a green one with pointy ends, what we call the gem-shaped ones. It's one of these. Yeah, which one says but and? That's the one, drag it in, pop it in the hole, wait for the light, there it is, clip, okay. So we want now, we want it to, what we want it to do is we want it to be touchable, right? So it needs to be sensing things. So where's the sensing menu on your left hand side? What colour is that? Yes, um, like that. What colour is that one? That one is light blue. Light blue. So we want it to be when touching the mouse pointer. Can you find the gem shaped block that says touching mouse pointer? That's the one. Clip that in the first hole. And then we want, oh pushed our gem out. So let's pop that in the gem, there we go. And we can pop that back in, oh, grab the whole thing, you wanna grab it from and, that's it, and in the hole. Great, and then in the second hole, we want mouse down. It's a little shorter gem shaped one that just says mouse down in it. That's it, clip that one in the second hole, so make sure it lights up. Oh, nearly, there we go, fantastic. So, if touching the mouse pointer and the mouse down is touched, what do we want it to do then? We want it to change its, yeah, we want to change its form into be the popped bubble, right? So we need to switch costumes. So that's in our looks menu. So go to looks, and we want it to switch costume two, or we could just do next costume, but let's go for switch costume to bubble two. Clip that in. And then what else do we want it to do? We want it to change how it looks, and we also want it to... Pop. All right, we want it to make that sound. Not bad. So let's go to our sounds tab, and we'll import a new sound. You remember how to do that? How do we get a new sound from the sound library? Very good. And which one do we want? Let's do a search for this one. Yeah. What's the sound we want? Pop. Pop. So type that in. Pop. And then we get two. So you can hover over the pluses and hear what they are. Yeah, I think this one. That one? Okay. So choose that one. Excellent. And then you like to play with the, the sound of the pop sometimes, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. That one? Yeah? You happy with that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go back to our code and to our sounds menu. Awesome. And then we want it to say what? Which one do we want? Do we want play sound pop until done? No. You don't yeah. reckon? Yeah? I think we want play sound pop until done because the other yeah. option is just start sound pop, isn't it? Yeah, because when it um went after it does it. So when we pop it, it pop we we pop it and then it pops after. That's right. So then we do it like that and it pops. Very good. So it will pop, we play the whole sound, and then we'll be able to pop another bubble, right? So let's go to play sound pop until done. And plug that in underneath our switch costume. That's it, excellent. So it will change to like it's popped, then it will play our pop sound. So click the green flag again, and we'll see. There we go, so we reset all our bubbles. So now if you click it, poppable bubble wrap. Nice work, buddy. Awesome work. So that's how we make digital bubble wrap, right? We can make it full screen. Let's go full screen to show everybody at home. And we click green flag and we get all our poppable bubbles. Right, and if we click the green flag, we get it back. Uh, now we want to do 
and when we move any of our body parts. Yeah, we can add that, can't we? Should we? I'll, I'll add that as a bonus features video, though, I think. I think today you've done like some really awesome work on this project. Do you want to pop some more bubbles? Nice. All right, and once you've popped all the bubbles... All right, so what are you doing there? Tell everybody what you were doing then. I was just holding it. Holding it down and moving it around, right, to pop all the bubbles. Awesome. I think they all pop now. Cool. That's nice. Well done, man. That's great. So that's the bubble popping project, everybody. So if you wanted to have a go at that sort of thing, then if you can follow this video here, there's also the balloons project on the project site that's done in a whole bunch of different languages for you. That's pretty much the same sort of thing. It just allows you to pop floating balloons instead of bubble wrap. Uh, and again, I'll make some bonus features videos where I'll show you how to do it with motion sensing in the video camera just a bit later on. You'll be able to find those on the rpf.io slash home website. So keep making cool stuff. Try not to get stressed out, everybody. I know it's starting to be a long time since we've been able to go out, but uh, maybe some digital bubble wrap will help you with that. And um, you can do any sound, but um, we will do popping sound like that mm -hmm. more because that's more popping, popping than like other ones. Mm -hmm. But if you don't like that sound, you can make whatever you yeah. want, right? Yeah, you could do anything. You have the other squish pop, or you can have a clap sound or a scream sound. It's up to you which one you want. So thanks again, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Uh, until then, stay safe, keep making cool stuff, and share your stuff with us at rpf.io slash home. We love to see the cool projects you're making. Uh, and maybe you make something that's a little bit different with, like, uh, screaming butterflies or something. We'd love to see that project, so send them in to us. Uh, say goodbye to everybody, man. We'll catch you Bye. later. Later, gang. Bye.